All right, what is up y'all? It's Tony Holiday, back at it again with another video. Today's video, what I wanna talk about is actually increasing your workflow and just making you faster at producing. I think that's a really important part of music production is getting your ideas down quickly so that you can move on to the next step of your actual production. You don't wanna get stuck just nitpicking and dialing in little things here and there, but one of the best ways to increase your workflow production is to actually get really good at using hotkeys. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. These hotkeys that I'm gonna show you aren't necessarily the most advanced hotkeys by any means, but I would say that they're probably the ones that I use the most and most often and I've gotten pretty good with them. I think they really increase my workflow by quite a bit and I think that they'll help you guys out a lot too. Before we get started, please go follow me on all socials. That's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's Tony Holiday. Let's get straight into the video, you guys. I'm gonna show you how to increase your workflow and production by using key commands within Logic Pro. But yeah, let's get straight into the video. As you can see here, guys, I just have this blank Logic screen here. What I'm gonna do is just go through the different key commands one by one, and I'll try to give you an example of like a real world situation where you might use that key command as well. So the first one up that I find is just really good for creating and duplicating tracks is you see I have this audio one track here where you can just double click in this open space and it's gonna make you another track below that. And that actually goes for if you have a software instrument as well, it'll actually make it based on the last track you have selected. So we have instrument one here is a software instrument, I double click, it's a software instrument that comes up. If I go to the audio and double click, it's an audio track that comes up. So that's a really quick one if you're just trying to make new tracks and you wanna add new synths and things like that. Number two workflow tip. This one I think is probably the one that I use the absolute most. That is using the T on your keyboard. And what that does is it actually changes your left cursor tool here. As you can see, if I press T, it brings up this little menu here and it has a bunch of different tools that will now become my left cursor. These letters on the right side here are all the ones that you can press and that's gonna change the left cursor to that particular tool. For example, if I press P, it's gonna be a pencil tool now where I can write a pattern in. I press T again and I press E, it's gonna make it an eraser, I can get rid of that. When you're in the MIDI window, there's also a whole different set here as well. So there's like the quantize tool, velocity tool, zoom tool, automation tools, and my personal favorite, the brush tool. Getting really quick with that one has probably increased my workflow a ton. Rather than going up here or holding command and changing this, I think it's way better to just always use your left click but by changing it with T or TP, that's always been the best way for me personally. Tip number three, using J to join tracks. So for an example here, we'll press TT on our keyboard to make sure we have the pointer. We'll go TP to get the uh, pencil tool and we'll add in four different um, regions here. That would be kind of annoying if we were gonna record or create a four bar loop here. So what you can do on your keyboard is just press J and that will actually join them all together. This also works for audio as well. And there's kind of two different sides to it. For example, if I just duplicated that track five times here, I go up here and just add these. Well, now I have all these tracks all over the place in this situation, press J, nothing's gonna happen. It's not gonna join all these tracks like that. But let's say you have maybe like a take stack or something like that or a bunch of different MIDI regions where you'd like to join them, you could press Command J and it's gonna bring them all up onto one track like that. So that can be very useful if you have maybe like a take here, a take here, a take here, a take here, and you wanna put them all onto one track. You can just select all of them by pressing Command A and then Command J is gonna bring them all onto one region there. Workflow tip number four with the key commands is to move along regions. So as you can see here as this instrument one, I've created this little loop here. Press um, either comma to go backwards or period to go forwards on your keyboard. So that'll move it along one bar at a time. So if you have something playing here and you need to just move forward, you're trying to create a loop but it's in one section that you really wanna figure it out. I wanna hear that again, go backwards, go backwards, go backwards, things like that. You can also hold down shift and then press the same key, either the period or the comma, and it'll go by eight bars. So if you're trying to go in a bigger section, perhaps you can do that and find out where you're really searching for that certain section. Key command number five. Now this one isn't a default key command, so you'll have to set this one up, but I personally use it all the time. So to set up key commands, you can actually press 
option K on your keyboard and that'll bring up key commands. What you wanna type in is tap tempo, global commands tap tempo. I have it set up here as shift and forward slash. So you can go ahead and set that up now. What that'll do is it'll allow you to actually set your tempo based on how fast you type that forward slash when you're holding shift down. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry, I'll show you what I mean here. Let's say you have someone in the back playing a real live instrument and they make something cool and now you want to start a project based on that instrument or instrumental. Well, it's kind of hard to just, you know, go along here and ask the person what the BPM is. They're not going to know. What you can do is use tap tempo to get extremely close and then dial it in later. For example, let's say something was going as quick as like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If you see my magic keyboard here, if I hold shift and forward slash and look on the screen, it says, would you like to enable tap tempo? Click okay to auto enable external sync and tap tempo in project settings. Oh, okay. Now you can see this uh, playhead is actually blue and that has made uh, tap tempo enabled. Now you can press this, do a four count to make sure you're in time. So like I said, if we go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you can see that the tap tempo that I just created here is 164. At this case, I would probably just round it up to 165 and then you're ready to start recording. The metronome is gonna be pretty close for the person that's playing the instrument. You can always dial it in a little bit better afterwards. That's a really useful one that I use all the time. It's good for samples. It's good for live instruments. It's really just a good way to get a project set up. Workflow tip number six, and this is cut at playhead. This one I probably don't use as much, but it is useful nevertheless. For example, let's say if I have all these regions here, maybe I've created, I've just jammed for a little bit here and I've created a couple different styles of playing in this region here. Well, what I can do is move on to the playhead. I can go Command T and cut out certain sections. Then what I can do is take that one section, drag it away, things like that, and like that. Very useful if, you, again, you are maybe taking different sections out of something you've played and you want to rearrange them. It's also useful if, say, you reverse an audio file and you want to put it back to the same chord progression. Because it's reverse, it'll take everything and make it backwards. So you're going to have to take the four and put it back here and take the two and put it there again, things like that. That's a useful one to kind of chop up audio files like that. Tip number seven and the final tip that we're going to use today for key commands, that is is force legato. And I'm sure you've heard this before if you've been making trap music. People tend to do this with their 808s a lot. So I'm gonna make a simple little pattern here and we'll pretend like it's maybe an 808 or something. I'll show you why force legato is a really powerful tool as well. So I've just created a little pattern here. It's literally just some random notes, but we can pretend like this might be a pattern for like a bass line or anything really. The distance between the two notes in here is different than this distance it's different than that distance. It's different than that distance. You get the picture of what I'm trying to say here. We want all these notes to play exactly up until the point that the following note starts. So what you can do is called force legato. You can do command A on your keyboard and then shift backslash. And as you can see, it takes each note and it extends it exactly to the point where the next one starts, but it doesn't overlap them. It gives you exactly the amount to the point where there's gonna be a little gap, so the next one's played at its full velocity. There's no crossfade or anything like that. Force Legato, very useful for things like 808s, kind of those Drake sort of mogi basses. And you just wanna have that sitting in the background and you want each note to play all the way to the next one. You don't have to go and individually do each one. You can just use Command A to select all, and then shift backslash to set every note to play exactly to the next note. Bonus tip guys, and this one again is kind of like a pretty basic tip. I use it all the time if I'm just messing around and that is to bring up your musical typing keyboard. So for those of you that maybe don't have a MIDI keyboard, but you're just trying to find out notes, maybe you're trying to figure out a bass line or maybe just a simple little melody and you don't want to click the notes in, Command K is going to bring up your musical typing keyboard. And as you can see, we have all of these corresponding keyboard letters are gonna correspond with the notes on this piano roll. Playing over a loop or something and I just wanna figure out what key it's in really quick, well, I'll Command K and I'll go and find the root note on that. And then Command K to get off again, 
and boom, you're done with that. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for me. I know that these are kind of basic key commands, but I find that they're a really great foundation if you're trying to increase your workflow and just become faster and essentially better at producing. Maybe I'll do another key commands video in the future that's maybe some more advanced ones that are really kind of take you to the next level. But I think for beginners, these are really necessary to use because they're gonna just make you quicker. If you're in a session with an artist or I mean, if you're just messing around with a friend, nobody likes to sit around while you kind of, you know, mess around and get everything dialed. It's like, let's just get the session going. Let's get the ideas into the DAW and then we can go on from there. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure to hit subscribe. I'm gonna be putting out more videos soon, I promise. Thank you for being super patient and I know I've been delayed a lot on this. There will be more videos to come. Make sure to give me a follow on all socials. That's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. It's Tony Holiday. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Tony Holiday, signing off.